The New Zealand government chartered plane is finally in the air following a delayed departure from Wuhan. The Air New Zealand aircraft is carrying Kiwis, Australians and Pacific Islanders who were stranded in China. The flight departed at 4.45 Australian Eastern Daylight Time this morning and will land in Auckland early this evening. Australians on board are set to be transferred to Christmas Island. Let's go live back to Canberra now. Labor MP Peter Khalil joins us. Peter Khalil, good to see you. We've seen a, a huge response to the coronavirus. We've also seen some criticism out of the Chinese embassy yesterday levelled at the Australian government. Was that warranted? Uh, good morning, Laura. Um, look, um, I'm a bit confused because the reporting is suggesting that um, the Foreign Minister, Maurice Payne, did in fact... Um, uh, inform Chinese officials, senior Chinese officials in uh, China uh, after that National Security Committee made that decision uh, and yet we're hearing something quite different from the embassy. Um, uh, regardless of uh, what, what's, what the facts are there, I would say that um, Australia's sovereign uh, right to uh, make laws and implement policies that uh, protect our citizens and protect our borders uh, and that's something that I think should be respected uh, uh, um, by other countries um, and so while the Chinese embassy is you know, well within its rights to make points about uh, their citizens, uh, Australia has every right to do what is necessary to ensure public health and safety. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen another important announcement today, if I could change tack. And it, it comes after a long campaign in the media, also within the veteran community, to do something about veteran suicide. It is something that yeah. we should be embarrassed and, uh, quite frankly, um, really ashamed of, that 400 veterans have taken their lives since 2001. There were calls for a Royal Commission. That hasn't happened, but there will be a new commissioner who has all the powers of a Royal Commission. Is that good? Yeah, look, you, f first I want to say that um, it, is, it is horrible. It's 419 suicides that we know of that have been reported. Obviously, there, there, there could be some more. But uh, it's, it's a horrible scourge uh, on, the, on the veterans community and the families for those who serve, put their, their um, lives on the line uh, serving our country. Uh, and we've been calling for a Royal Commission. I think I mentioned this on the program last year. Shane Newman, our Shadow Minister, has called for a Royal Commission. Our leader, Anthony Albanese, uh, last year as well. Um, and so we welcome this announcement by the government. Uh, Labor welcomes this announcement by the government. Shane did the doors this morning welcoming that announcement. But we want to make absolutely sure that the new uh, commissioner has the, the powers of a royal commission. So the devil is going to be in the detail a bit. Obviously, if they're going to establish a commissioner, um, there will need to be legislation. So we want to have a look at that detail to make sure that they have those powers. Um, we don't... I mean, as you've heard, a lot of the vets... It's that extra layer of bureaucracy that is part of the problem, trying to cut through uh, to get the services or the help that they need and being frustrated uh, without being able to do that. So... Um, we need to make sure that um, uh, we get this right, uh, and this is the chance to do it. So we, we support, and there's bipartisan support for this step. I would just make one other point um, about this, uh, Laura, I, I, and this is a bit more of a personal point. I mean, I was in Iraq for a year and I saw firsthand, well, I, I came out and I got a, a, an army psych uh, evaluation at the end of that, um, even though I was a defence official. Uh, and I think once this is established, um, it would be good to see if uh, uh, the services and the, and the work could be expanded to include intel intelligence officials, defence officials, DFAT officials who are also working on the front line and experiencing some of the more extreme uh, experiences, if you like, that you get in conflict zones and war zones, um, mm. because that, there are many Australians who serve in national security type roles as well that need to be uh, considered. So I think that's just a, a, an additional thing that might uh, come down the line. Yeah, that, that's a really good point as well, Peter Khalil. I suggested to Ben English, the editor of the Daily Telegraph, a little earlier in the program, that if we do get some recommendations out of this, they are implemented and we can see them working they could be extrapolated to not only the cohorts you're talking about, but the broader community. I mean, 3,000 to 4,000 young people in every age group a year in Australia are killing themselves. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. If there are lessons to be learned from this, uh, that can, as you say, be extended to the broader community to reduce, uh, eliminate 
if we can, suicide, uh, that would be a good thing. Um, I, what I don't want to see, though, is that this becomes just another layer of bureaucracy. That's why we are very, very, very strongly uh, saying that we want to make sure that the, the Commission has the powers of a Royal Commission. That's absolutely necessary baseline, um, and all those powers are necessary for them to, to do the, the work that's necessary. So I, I think it's a good thing going forward. Um, we support it. We want to see the detail, obviously, when mm -hmm. it comes to the Parliament for the, the legislation. Um, but it's something that, that veterans are around this country and their families, and I've got to say too, the great work of uh, Julianne Finney and um, all the mums and dads who uh, you know, were bravely uh, meeting with political leaders to push for action in this space, um, they should be commended for, for the work they've done, particularly difficult for them given what they've experienced losing their, the, you know, their loved one. Yeah, very well said, uh, Peter Khalil. Uh, on that note, uh, such a lovely note of bipartisanship, could I just quickly ask you about what we saw happen yesterday? We saw a new Greens leader who's even uh, yep. further to the left than the, the old one in the National Party. We see Michael McCormack reinstalled, but with uh, calls for him to arguably go further to the right. What does that tell you about where Labor should be? Well, can I not be bipartisan anymore and get a bit more political with this answer uh, and, and say I, I think one of the disappointing things about yesterday was that yesterday was supposed to be about us paying our respects, uh, commemorating, acknowledging the sacrifices that have been made by uh, our firefighters, nine who lost their lives in, the, in, the, in, in, in these fires over summer, uh, and 33 people overall. It was about us as a parliament being united in our acknowledgement of that and our commemoration of that and, and being united in, in our response to that and our, for the recovery and everything else that we need to do, because this is still going on. The fires are still happening, as you know. Mm. Um, and yet we had two parties um, uh, playing politics, doing their politics in, in the morning. I mean, really, couldn't they have thought of another time to do this, waited until ne next week maybe? Um, and there was a fair bit of self-centeredness there, I think, um, by both. I, mean, I know the Prime Minister said, oh, I'm glad they got it out of the way in the morning. Mm. But seriously, this, this, was, uh, this was really bad timing. And uh, as a nation, we needed mm. to be united yesterday. We, we largely did that for the rest of the day, which was good. Um, but those political parties on the extremes, if you like, yeah. um, your question is where should Labor be? Well, well Labor will be where we, we know we should be, which is the sensible centre. Um, we, we're working through our policies and we'll deliver uh, policies to the Australian people uh, as the alternative government. We're the official opposition. Okay. We know that we have the responsibility to implement those policies in government. I'm going to try for a quick yes or no answer here. Should your climate change emissions reduction policy be done this year? Closer then to the next This election. year? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean... <laughs> I tried for a yes or no. I didn't think it would work. Yeah, yeah, comp, comp, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, Laura. But um, in the sense that I think we need to get to zero emissions, obviously, there are many of us who believe that. We need to invest in renewable energy. Um, how uh, the detail of those policies, uh, and there should be a massive investment in renewable energy to transition and, and so on, and there should be a very strong and just transition for workers um, over okay. the decades. The detail of that policy needs to, to be worked through, and I think we'll announce it when we're ready to announce it. Okay, thanks so much. See you soon. Thanks, Laura.